This video will look at bubble and insertion sorts. So sorting algorithms are used to sort data in arrays in particular ways. So for example, it might be used to sort a set of numbers from highest to lowest or from lowest to highest. Now there are some standard sorting algorithms that have been developed. And what we're gonna have a look at um, in this video is the bubble sort and the insertion sort. And in each case, we're going to be trying to sort our data so that we've got numbers going from small to high. Now the bubble sort algorithm is very simple. It repeatedly steps through a list of data. It compares each pair of data that it comes across and swaps them if they're in the wrong order. So here's an example of a set of data and the bubble sort is going to attempt to sort these items. So it comes up to the first pair, which is five and seven, and it says, okay, they are in the right order. So then it moves on to the next pair, which is seven and two. Now, these are not in the correct order, so they're going to swap the items so that the two moves down and the seven moves up, and then the algorithm's gonna move on to the next pair, which is seven and three. Again, they're in the wrong order, so they're going to swap now we look at the next pair in the list, which is seven and seven. Well, they're in the correct order. So then we move on to the next pair, which is seven and nine. And they are also in the correct order. So they do not change position. At this point, the algorithm has done one pass. Okay, it's called a pass when it works its way through the data set. And it's done a few swaps, but the, the data set is still not in a sorted state. So what the bubble sort will do is it will do another pass. So it compares the first two items, five and two, and they're not in the right order, so they'll swap. It will compare the five and the three, they're not in the correct order, so they will swap. The five and seven are in the correct order, the seven and the seven are in the correct order, and the seven and the nine are in the correct order, and the array is now sorted. Now, as far as the algorithm's concerned, it doesn't know at this point that the array is sorted. So there will be one final pass, which is pass three in this case, um, and it will be only known to the algorithm that the data is in the correct order if it can pass through without having to do any swaps. And that's what would happen obviously in the third pass. So there'll always be one more pass, even after the data set is um, sorted, just to ensure that the, well, for the algorithm to really recognize that everything is ordered. So if it can go through without having to do any swaps, it knows at that point that the array is sorted. So here we have uh, an algorithm pseudocode, uh, in pseudocode to demonstrate the logic of the bubble sort. So we begin with our while loop and we're gonna enter the while loop whilst unsorted is true. In other words, the data set hasn't yet been sorted. We're then gonna change our flag variable uh, to false. We're gonna assume that after this pass, okay, the, um, the data has been sorted so that we can come out of the while loop. So we're gonna change it to false. We're gonna assume that it's going to be fine, but we can change that flag back to true if we realize that we do need to make a swap. In other words, the data hasn't been sorted. So we enter a for loop and the for loop is going to uh, cycle through each item of our array from position uh, one to the um, end of the data set. And if, as it, as it cycles through each item, if it finds an item that is greater than the one after it, the one to its right, then we're going to go, okay, the data set hasn't been sorted, so we're gonna change the unsorted flag to true. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to swap those items around. Now to swap the items around, you do need an extra variable uh, that we're gonna call in this case temp to hold an item as the swap takes place. It's easiest to see this in a visual manner. So for example, here's our data set and we're gonna have, we've come to the first pair which is five and two and we want to swap them around. So we have this temporary variable and these three lines of uh, code here, temp equals data set position. Now what that means is that 
if we've got to um, the first item and we're looking that there's a five there and the five is greater than the next one which is two what we're going to do is we're going to take five out and we're going to put it into the temporary variable okay well I say take it out we're just going to copy the five over to the temporary variable then we've got what we're going to do is we're going to say okay the item that is one greater than the one that we're focusing on so the two here when I say greater I mean the one which is in position above uh, the last we're going to uh, take that two in this case and we're going to put it into the it uh, the position before it so the two is going to replace the five and then what we're going to do is because at the moment we've got a two in here we've still got a two here and we've got the five in the temporary variable we now need to replace the two which is in this position okay with the five and that's what happens on that last item so these three lines of code are swapping in this case the five and the two around and it's making use of a temporary variable so it doesn't overwrite the item before the swap takes place so that continues um, until a pass has taken place if a pass takes place and there are no swaps then unsorted doesn't become true it remains false and the loop will finish so it knows that that final pass has taken place and it knows the algorithm knows that the uh, data set is now sorted now the insertion sort, uh, again very simple in how it works, it is a little bit more efficient than a bubble sort, uh, certainly for smaller sets of data, even though the big O notation is exactly the same, uh, but it is a slightly more um, efficient one. Um, and what it does is it steps through a list of data and for each item that it finds it compares it with the previous items of data. And now if it's greater than the previous item, then it stays where it is. If it's smaller than the pre previous item, it's then compared with items before that, and then it is inserted into the correct position. So let's have a look at the insertion sort algorithm in a more visual manner. So let's start off with this set of data. The insertion sort would look at the five um, and try and compare it to the items before it. Now there's nothing before the five, so the insertion sort would move up to the next item. The next item is seven. Now the seven is greater than the item before it, so therefore it's in the correct position, so it doesn't move. The algorithm would then move on to the next item, which is the number two in this case. Now the two is less than the item before it. So what happens is that the insertion sort would make a copy of the item before it which is the seven and overwrite the uh, the value of two uh, so in effect that seven is going to be shifted up one in the data set now the algorithm will take note that it's a two that it's um, trying to insert back in but it needs to insert it in the right place so the insertion sort algorithm would look at the item that was before where the seven was before um, and it will see that it's a five now the 2 is smaller than the 5, so the 5 also needs to shift up one place. So the algorithm would move it into that position. And because there's nothing uh, before the 5, the 2 can be inserted into that new location. So you can see here, there how the insertion sort has taken out a value, compared it with two items to its uh, left or, or before it, and then inserted it into the correct place. Now the insertion sort moves up to the next item in the list, which is the three. The three is uh, smaller than a seven, so the seven moves up one. The three is smaller than the five, so the five moves up one. And it is greater than the two, so then it's inserted into the correct position like so. So let's have a look at um, the insertion sort algorithm written in pseudocode. So what we've got here is a for loop that is going to cycle through um, each item in the array. So for position one to the length of the data set, that's then a for loop that's going to start off at the beginning and finish at the end of the data set. Now, f during each um, iteration of that for loop, it's going to get um, the value 
um, in a particular position of the data set. And it's going to say that whilst the uh, position that it's at is greater than zero, so whilst it's not um, over on the left hand side of the array uh, at the beginning of it, and whilst the value that it's currently at is smaller than the item to the left of it, what the algorithm is going to do is it's going to shift the prior item up one. And it's going to repeatedly do that until either it is at the start of the list or the current value is no longer less than the one before it. And it's then going to be inserted into the correct position. So let's have a look at that in a bit more of a visual manner again. So with this set of data, let's imagine that we're currently at uh, the position, uh, currently at the item at position four, which is the value three. So we enter the while loop. We are not at position zero. We're greater than position zero. And the current value, which is three, is less than the value which is at uh, data set position minus one, so the one before it. So what's going to happen is that the item that is at uh, the one before it, which is the seven, is going to go over to the right hand side. It's going to go into data set pos. Okay, so it's going to take that place. And then we're going to take one away from uh, pos, and we're going to go back and uh, continue that while loop. So it's going to check again, are we at the start of the array? No, we're not. And is the three still less than the item before it, which is the five? Yes, it is. So the five's going to uh, to move up. And we're going to update our pos value again. We're going to go back to the while loop. We are no longer, um, sorry, we're, we're still not at the start of the array. So pos is still greater than zero. And well, actually in this case, this is no longer true. The current value of three is not less than the item before it, which is a two. So the while loop doesn't get entered. And what then happens is that the current value, which is three, then gets reinserted back into the correct position. Okay. So that's how that um, algorithm works. So now let's have a look at the complexities of these sorting algorithms. So to begin with the bubble sort, the big O notation is O n squared. Now why is it O n squared? Well, in the worst case, the list will be reverse sorted. That means the biggest item or biggest value will be first, the smallest one at the end. And we want to obviously reverse that to make it sorted. In a single pass, so think about a single pass, the algorithm is going to compare each pair in turn and might swap items if they're in the, in the wrong position. But on a single pass, because it's going to be looking at each of those items in turn, the complexity just on a single pass is going to be O n. But the problem is that in the worst case, it's going to have to pass through that data set over and over and over again until the data set is sorted. In fact, in a worst case scenario, the amount of passes that it's going to have to do is going to be the same number as there are elements in the list. So that in itself is O n. So the big O for the bubble sort is O n to the power of two. So O n times n, O n squared. So it's n number of passes, but in a single pass, it's n number of comparisons. So you multiply those together. Um, so it's n squared. Now the insertion sort algorithm is also O n squared. Again, the worst case scenario, the list is going to be reverse sorted. Now the insertion sort is going to visit each item in the data set in turn. It's going to do that regardless. It's a for loop. It's going to look at each item in turn. So that in itself is O n. But on each visit, it's also going to have to compare the preceding items and make insertions, which is effectively also O n. So the big O for the insertion sort, just like before, is O n squared. It's n number of items in the list that it needs to visit, but it's also n, n number of um, comparisons it, need, it will need to do um, with items before, um, including the insertion. 
So O N squared in the worst case. 